So when we hear of the 12 apostles, when we hear the, the list, I'm not sure if, if anybody can, can name the 12 apostles. If it wasn't for a song that I learned in primary school, I wouldn't be able to list all of the 12 apostles probably. But I think when I was about yay high, we learned this, <clears throat> this tune. I suppose I was eight, nine years of age. And that's, if I have to list the apostles, I mean, I, I, I play it all cool, but that's the song I'm playing in my head, just actually to make sure I don't forget them. Uh, so, uh, they're, they're, they're so important. You know, the, the, the first thing from the book of the Apocalypse talks about them being like the foundation stones of the church. And yet, so many of them are so unknown. Isn't it interesting like, that they could have such an important role? And yet, like, if, if someone asks you, so, so uh, St. Bartholomew, yeah, one of the 12 like, columns of your church, tell me about them. <laughs> Most of us would be kind of stumped. For, and, that's, and that's the case, actually, for most of the apostles, I would imagine. Apart, apart from maybe <clears throat> Peter, <clears throat> his brother Andrew, John, who wrote the Gospels. <clears throat> apart from that, unless maybe it's, uh, unless you had a particular devotion to one of them or it's your name, apart from that, you might actually know very little about them, which is, I say, very, very interesting, considering, as I say, how important they are. Uh, what do we know about <clears throat> Bartholomew or, or Nathanael? Not much, not much. But what we do know, I think, is very, very important. And I think there's a, a, a key lesson to be learned from how Jesus describes Nathanael. <clears throat> so, uh, when Jesus saw Nathanael coming, he said of him, Here is an Israelite who deserves the name, incapable of deceit. Now, I think if the Lord said that, if Jesus said that of, of any of us, we'd be pretty chuffed, actually. I think we'd be pretty delighted. You know, if, if God were to say of you, you know, you have a heart that is incapable of deceit. Like, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Do you know what I mean? To not have that kind of two-facedness, but just what, kind of what you see is what you get. And when you love, you love authentically. Now, what's interesting, and I never actually noticed this until, until recently, is that <clears throat> Nathaniel then goes on to prove him right, okay? Because when Nathaniel sees him, and Jesus said, yeah, I, I saw you under the fig tree. Immediately, Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the son of God. Okay? So, within two sentences, like it's, it, Jesus said one thing to him, basically. <clears throat> Before Philip came to call you, I saw you under the fig tree. That was it. One sentence. And then Nathanael answers, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Remember, Peter confessed something similar, but that was after years in Caesarea Philippi when, when Jesus asked, now, who, do the, who do the people say the Son of Man is? Some say you're one of the prophets, some say you're John the Baptist. And then Peter speaks up and says, you are the Christ. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. It was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. That happens a good bit down the line after they have spent a long time with Jesus. But Nathaniel spots this within one sentence. Okay? How is that? Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. When one has a pure heart, not a heart that's full of kind of deception and deceit, and looking at how, how, how can I get my advantage in this situation, but a heart that's, that's pure, a heart that, that's single-minded, single that, that, I say, isn't duplicious. Uh, that kind of a heart is actually going to recognize God much quicker than than us, or than a heart that's, that, that's complicated and, and that has multiple motives. Well, I was talking about this recently um, with someone at, at, at the table here, how it's difficult for us at times to know what our motivations are for doing something, even something good, right? So you hold the door for someone, right? So someone's coming in and you hold the door. Now, it's a nice gesture, <clears throat> but then if they walk past you and ignore you, okay, oh, fine, I'm not doing that again. So, were you holding the door to honour them, or were you holding the door for thanks? Or were you holding the door because you know that the floor is slippy and you just want to check and see if someone falls before you go in? After you. <laughs> so, you see, <coughs> we, can, we, can be, we can be complicated. We can also have multiple intentions at the same time, which is what makes us complicated, which makes us hard for us to recognise our own motives. For example, maybe single men who do something nice for a girl, uh, you know, talking to her, or, you know, say back to holding a door, really have to come up with more examples, uh, but um, compliments, 
helping someone in the office, you know what I mean, helping them carry their bags, right, very good. Uh, and you might do that because you can see they're struggling, trying to carry three bags and, you know, get their keys out or something, so you go over and you help them. But you want to help them because they're struggling, but maybe you kind of want to help them so that they, they like you. As w and these things can be going on simultaneously. It's, so it's not, it's not always easy for us to know our own motivations. Did I help them because they needed help? Or did I help them because they needed help and she happens to be really pretty as well? Like if that was, if she was 90, would I have helped her as quickly? Or is it just because, you know, I'd like, I'd like her to see me and to know me and to thank me and, you know, if we're ever to kind of get things together later, you know, I mean, invite her for a coffee or she might, who knows? See, so, so we can have multiple intentions running at the same time. And this happens a lot. This happens an awful lot. Also within the church, where people are doing something good, but if they don't get thanked, They'll, they'll, they'll destroy you. If they, don't get th if they don't get the mention, as we'd say in Ireland, if they don't get the mention, like, they'll, uh, they'll never forgive you. Uh, so it's, it's very, it's, it's complex. We're complex. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. Here's an Israelite who deserves the name incapable of deceit. That kind of simplicity of heart. I help you because you need help. I don't want anything back. I give because I have the resources and because there's someone uh, in, in more need of it than I. End of story. Uh, I, was, I was talking to a, a priest a while ago and he was saying that a, a friend of his promised to give him a, a donation and um, he, he has a missionary community so he was, he was delighted with this and the friend said look I'll, we'll arrange it on this date and I just want to call a couple of friends together and so he called journalists and all sorts of things and there was the handover of the cheque with the handshake and all the photos. And like, the missionary priest wasn't, he wasn't being ungrateful, but the whole hoo-ha was for a check of a thousand euro, which again, it, it, it's, it's good, but considering who that guy was and the resources that he has and the, let's say, the big fuss that was made of it, it just seemed a bit anticlimactic. But the point was, are you giving this money now because you want to support the mission or are you giving this money because you want the picture of the Tipperary Star and the Limerick Leader and whatever, wherever else it was. Are you giving because you love the Lord or are you giving for thanks? You know? Here is an Israelite who deserves the name incapable of deceit. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. And he does see God. And so... If we, if we can be honest with ourselves, and I'll say this, is, this takes a bit of work, uh, something I think hopefully we're all working on, I know I'm, I'm working on it recently myself as well, just be much more attentive of, of the why behind my actions. And when you recognize maybe that, you're, that your action isn't solely for love of God or for love of the other, well then to, 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 to learn how. Now how do we learn? Very briefly, the Lord will provide. The Lord is the great teacher in all of these things. The Lord. So if, if we are duplicious, if we have multiple motivations, the Lord will provide circumstances where we help someone and we don't get thanked. And that's actually your opportunity to grow. Rather than this like being a, 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 a travesty and you know, a horrific thing and just a blatant, blatantly ignorant person who didn't thank me, this is actually our opportunity to grow in virtue. Because there it is. You, know, you did something good, fine. You weren't thanked. Well, leave it there. As in, you helped for love of God, great. Move on with your life. And help again, by the way, that same person. Like the Lord will provide the circumstances where our motivations can be purified. And that can, that can be hard. That can be hard, especially if our, if our actions can actually be misinterpreted. That's, that's, that's very, very hard. That's very, very saddening. Where you help someone and then a person thinks you only did that because I'm wealthy and you want to be, you know, in with the wealthy or you only did this because you think I can get you a better job. You only did this because you're taking pity on me, you know. And no, that's, that's, not, that's not the reason. So at times our motivations can actually be misunderstood, which hurts. But the Lord provides all these opportunities for us to grow in virtue. That we can have that same kind of heart, that childlike heart, that heart incapable of deceit. And so we ask the Lord today that we will have eyes to recognize all of these opportunities to grow in virtue. 
And Lord, that you will root out of us all of our ego in our actions, in our service, in our generosity, Lord, to remove all of the, the me out of it, and that I might be just happy to do things out of love for you and for your greater glory. Amen.